First one goes to Marco. Marco says, I have a question that bothers me for a couple of weeks now. Some coaches like to prescribe numbers for the angle in the first pole, like 40 degree back angle from the floor until above the knee in the clean. Do you think that's useful? If so, what angles do you like to see? How does this approach take body types into account? No, Marco, I don't like that. I don't like it one bit, and I'll give you all the reasons for my opinion right now. Um, first of all, I have never once in my life carried a protractor to the gym. I don't ever plan on carrying a protractor. Uh, I don't plan on using an app on my phone to measure angles in real time. So what you're going to do is if you actually want to measure angles of anything, the knee, the hip, uh, the ankle, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to take photos or videos, go back, process that somehow to take those measurements, which means you don't get real time feedback anyway. So it's essentially useless. So for example, if you decided, okay, 40 degrees of the back relative to the floor is what I'm looking for. All right. Well, you're training, you just trained all day doing snatches and cleans. Now you got to go back that night, measure those things out, come back your next training session and say, no, that wasn't 40 degrees. It was 43 degrees. So now I have to correct it. Well, how are you going to correct it? Because you can't measure it. So you're just going to try it. I'm going to change three degrees. You're really going to be able to tell. Uh, so point being, there's no way that's going to help you in real time. And you're actually training uh, in the gym, which is when you need that feedback. So as a tool for researchers to study, I suppose it has some sort of value. I can't tell you what exactly that value is because I don't really see it, but uh, I, I'm sure the white coat dudes can use it for something. Now, having said that, uh, you do need to be hitting certain positions within certain ranges, right? So in other words, I do want to see a certain angle of the back when you are pulling off the floor. I can't tell you what that angle is numerically because I don't know and it doesn't really matter because again, we can't measure it in a way that's helpful. Uh, so what I'm looking for are uh, a few criteria which are very simple. I want to see the bar starting over the balls of the foot approximately. Um, if you're very short, short-legged, that might start a little farther back. If you're very tall, it might start slightly farther forward, no far forward than the front of the toes. Uh, I want to see the knees a little bit over the bar at least, not behind the bar, so the shins are nowhere near vertical. Uh, I want to see the joint of the shoulder essentially directly above the bar. So if I'm looking at the lifter from the side, arm is approximately vertical, so the leading edge of the shoulder is slightly in front of the bar, right, because you actually have some shoulder mass. Um, and if you are hitting those points, that's the correct angle of the back, right? I don't have to get my protractor out or my... Uh, you know, magic phone device and sit there and try to adjust you till we get exactly 40 degrees or whatever we've decided is correct. Um, because we're hitting the, the positions that are correct and those positions force the angles that are correct. And to your, your last part of the question here, how does this approach take body types into account? It doesn't. And that's why you see these ridiculous ranges of angles like, oh, we want the back, uh, the back angle anywhere from, you know, 34 to 48 degrees. That's useless. So not only can you not measure it, but that's a huge range. Uh, so it's, I mean, there's nothing helpful or valuable about, uh, valuable about prescribing a specific uh, joint angle, in my opinion. I do not see how that is ever going to be practically helpful. Uh, so in terms of taking different body types into account, what I'm talking about uh, using criteria that use relative positions. In other words, the shoulder's position relative to the bar, the bar's position relative to the foot. Those are all things that are going to be essentially the same regardless of body type. And what's going to happen is the actual joint angles will change, but those positional relationships will always be the same within a very small range. So we know that we are correct. Hey, this guy's six foot four, this girl's four foot 10, but you know what? We can look at them, both of them, and say, Shoulder joints above the bar, bars over the balls of the foot, everything's fine. Um, and, and so you, you need to work with things like that that allow you to apply these uh, criteria to any lifter in any given situation. And very shortly, I think, when you're paying attention to that as a coach or even as an athlete, uh, you're going to develop the ability to 
kind of recognize those positions very quickly and easily. You're not going to have to get out there and, and, you know, put your finger up and kind of look past it and try to see if the arm is vertical or, you know, whatever goofy stuff you're doing. You're going to recognize very quickly, hey, you need to bring your hips up a little bit to bring your shoulders far to forward because your shoulders are behind the bar. Or, no, you're way too far above the bar. Uh, bring your hips down a little bit. Bring your knees farther forward over the bar and bring your chest up. Or, you know, whatever the case is. Or the bar is too far back, bring it a little farther forward. Um, so y you can look into uh, the angles and, and kind of get an idea. But, you know, I, I've read all the old Soviet manuals that have just reams of uh, figures like that. And I have never once used them in practice. And I, uh, I feel like I've been okay without that. I've been able to put lifters into good positions and improve whatever positions they're using. Greg Everett with Catalyst Athletics here. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. If you have questions, post them in the comments. I answer all of them. Also check out catalystathletics.com for the biggest Olympic weightlifting exercise library out there along with hundreds of free articles and videos and other resources for both athletes and coaches.